Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Fifty Shades of Tay. I'm Taylor Gonzalez, and my guest today has directed movies including She's the Man, The Game Plan, Race to Witch Mountain, You Again, <laughs> I know, all behind you, <laughs> and his upcoming horror film called Don't Turn Out the Lights is about to come out. I'm so excited to welcome Andy Fickman to Fifty Shades of Tay. How are you doing today? First of all, great to be on Fifty Shades of Tay. I would have been on 49 Shades of Tay had you invited me uh, earlier. But Fifty Shades of Tay, I am all for it. I really appreciate you taking the time. Oh, I appreciate you taking the time to speak with me. I love so many of the films that you've directed. Thank and you. I was curious, this is your first time directing a horror film. What made you decide to try horror? It's my, well, it's twofold. One is horror, weirdly enough, is my first love. Um it really is. It's what I grew up small town in Texas. I grew up loving horror films and kind of being scared. And so while I'm known for comedy, uh, mostly I um, am musicals, I guess I, I just have always wanted. And this was really personal to me. Uh, when I was a kid in Texas, my dad was a geologist and a paleontologist. And he was so he's a man of science, but he was deeply religious. And I would always ask, well, how can how can you be a man of science and deeply like that doesn't make sense. And he would tell me, he got me excited to hunt for look Bigfoot or Loch Ness monster. And he would say, you know, if you're a scientist, you can't ever stop searching. You have to keep finding the answers, even if we don't know it. And one day he told me, uh, he went to bed and he dreamt that he saw the angel of death. And the next morning phone rang and it was my grandfather telling him my grandmother had passed away unexpectedly. And my dad always wrestled with what that was. When I was in high school, we had moved to Houston and outside of Houston, there's a cemetery called Blue Light Cemetery. And it's an old abandoned, it is barbed wire, it is, you know, there are hundred year old tombstones. And the thing your the challenge when you were in high school was get a bunch of friends, go tell ghost stories, good luck. And we drove and it's one of those tree covered roads. And we drove down that road and we had a couple of bottles of Andre's cold duck, the champagne of high school. And uh, um, we crawled over the fence and we, it was barbed wire. So we had to put a jacket over and we all crawled over and go drink and we're in the middle. It's pitch black. There is no light, no anything. There's no sound. And we're telling ghost stories and we hear something, we hear a sound. And what sounds like heavy feet, not animals scurrying, heavy feet. There's no security light. There's no cops. And there was no car parked anywhere for miles. So it became a quick question of, what is happening? And we took off running. Everybody went over. Everybody went over. The person before me took the jacket by mistake, went over. And it's hard to see now, but I have a complete scar that runs from the, the barbed wire, the rusted, hmm. not the barbed wire, but the rusty barbed wire fence. And then for years, we would talk to each other about what happened. And not one of us had the same answer. Oh, wow. We all... You know, some of it was just, oh, that was a person. Some was, I'll tell you, it was a ghost. Then years later, researching a movie when I was in Hollywood, I was at uh, the Queen Mary with a private tour, a bunch of fancy producers. And we were in the engine room, which was notoriously haunted. And a giant iron pulley this big fell and just scraped by my arm. Oh, my God. But I'd been an inch over, a half an inch over, I'd be dead. And the tour guide at Queen Mary is like, oh, we should hurry up and leave. And it was about an hour and a half drive back. And these are all seasoned vets. And every one of us had a different opinion of what happened. And I felt that to me had been, I, every time I look at the scar on my hand, I'd think I, when people ask me about it, I'm like, well, I'm going to tell you a story, but it's not a story in which I can necessarily say, well, I can tell you how it ripped, but I can't tell you the why. Oh, and wow. that that stuck with me as, you know, the very nature of fear and the nature of all of us in our our heritage and ancestry. Everybody has a family member who saw something or, well, they believe in witchcraft or they believe in that. Like everybody has a story. And that interested me. And I felt the only way I really could do it was getting seven great unknown actors and us making a really indie indie movie in an rv in the middle of the woods in upstate new york and just 
having fun. Uh, yeah, and you can tell everyone was having fun making this film. So you're the writer, director, and a producer of this film. What is it like to wear so many different hats when making a film? And do you have a favorite role when it comes to filmmaking? I think directing is probably my favorite in the sense of you're on set and you're working. I'm, I, I, as a writer, I look at when I'm directing someone else's work, I feel my job is to interpret what they have done. As a writer, I, I write with a prototype in mind, but once I get seven actors, I'm like, okay, this is what I said, what would you say? And immediately they would change and it would be exactly what I wanted it to be, but from their mouth. And, and producing is just the, uh, producing is how many um, fire extinguishers do you have? Because you're going to have about 900 fires that day somewhere that you just have to put out while everybody else is having fun. So I think directing will always be my first love. Oh, that's great. Uh, I was also wondering what some of your favorite horror films are. Uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, the original Exorcist, the original Omen, uh, Rosemary's Baby. Um, uh, I loved Peter Weir's uh, Picnic at Hanging Rock. Uh, uh, and, you know, things like Jaws and all of those. Uh, um, Fright Night, the original. Mm -hmm. Like I was in, I was a kid of the 80s, so you know, every weekend there was a different Halloween or Friday the 13th or, you know, something that you got to go see like that. But those original scary movies like that, the Donald Sutherland invasion of the body snatchers, mm -hmm. those classic. And honestly, I'm looking at the face hugger, the original oh, yeah. alien. I remember going to the original alien and, I, and I, I was pretty young and went with some older kids and I, my mind was blown mm -hmm. like I was like how is that how is that a thing <laughs> that just happened but those movies those movies stuck with me all the time yeah those are some great movies I I love all of those that you just mentioned so for people who haven't had a chance to check out the trailer and without giving too much away how would you describe your new film seven friends go on what should be the greatest, most fun sex, drugs, and rock and roll uh, uh, road trip in an old RV and never make it. Uh, and it becomes one night of unexplainable terror mm -hmm. as they just have to fight off whatever it is they're fighting off. Perfect. That's a perfect summary without spoiling anything. <laughs> Since it's a horror film, did anything spooky or unusual happen on set while you were filming? Oh, all the time. We went, so the woods, we had to uh, scout different woods and, and you'd see it during the day, but then you had to go back at night because that you need to see what it looked like. And because we were in Indy, we couldn't afford post where it'd be like, if you get a lot of lights bleeding through, you're spending money to get, I'm like, I need nothing. And so the road that we actually shot on uh, my uh, producer partner, uh, Betsy Sullinger, and our other producer, Mary Kate Meath, we're in Betsy's, uh, we're in the rental car. And we pull up and we stop and we meet some other people. And she leaves her headlights on so we can have some light. And we start walking further in, down that road. And all of a sudden, headlights just went out. No reason. They went out. And all of us were like, okay, let's go. And then we just started moving back to the car. And then it was probably 10 minutes of driving out of the woods where we were all a little freaked out. And then there were, we all stayed in this very small hotel in Kingston, New York. And the cast would constantly, they'd be like, just feels like someone was murdered at this hotel, like every night. And I think because we were in the process of telling a horror story and everyone started bringing up things that connected him to it but those lights going out were pretty scary and i will say in order to get to video village and it was all handheld but to get if you weren't filming in that rv just mm. to get room for me and our 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 dp and our sound up there was just no room so we'd tell you well we're not shooting you in the shot go back nobody wanted to leave because it meant they had to go way down this scary road okay. and so the cast would just huddle like all together by like a tree with like one little flashlight and be like, we're good. We'll all stay together. 
Oh my gosh. Well, I just have one more question for you. I know you're currently also working on Wizards Beyond Waverly Place. Are you able to give me just a little bit of a tease of what's to come from that project? Um, a different sort of whore. Uh, uh, this is about wizards who uh, used to live at Waverly Place and now they live beyond Waverly Place. This is a, it, I've had so much fun with this project. Uh, we open in October and uh, David Henry back uh, uh, and in our opening in the pilot, Selena Gomez is back and Selena and David are executive producers on the project. Oh and have really uplifted and they have found a way to tell this story uh, and, and uplift it to where if you're a fan of the original, you got so many uh, Easter eggs that you're gonna be like, okay, I'm back home. And if you're not, if you're young and you've never seen the original, you're gonna watch this and wanna go back and see that. And I think everybody had the exact right idea of, of gathering together and we'll shoot the uh, season finale in a couple of months. And we're just, we've just been having the best time. And this cast, this young cast uh, of, of new wizards and wizard adjacents are just phenomenal. Oh, that's great. I cannot wait. Well, Andy, thank you for taking the time to speak with me. I thank really appreciate you. it. I and appreciate I can't wait you. for everyone to check out Don't Turn Out the Lights, which will be in select theaters and on VOD September 6th. Woo! Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you so much. I appreciate it, Taylor. Bye. Taylor's awesome. <laughs> Thank you. You too. <laughs>